The Taiwanese index is down 140 points. Well, the minutes clearly show a very deep division in the MPC. Uh, Lanko Amarkantak uh, uh, was in the NCLT and the Adani power bid has been declared the winner. JP Morgan has also raised the target price in Bajaj to 11,225. Within the first take, I mean, there's a bit of a sell-off as well. The Nifty is now up only about 9 to 10 points. The margins we are doing today, it has to enhance because, you know, you are seeing all the downstream projects will add more value. Things are quiet, markets are moving, the indices are moving absolutely sideways. So it still continues with duty drawback at around 15%. That a composite insurance license is in the process of receiving. A very quiet Friday, you have to say, for the benchmarks. Sharpest strategies, top market trends, unmatched perspectives, the trading day's most comprehensive roundup. Stay ahead with NSE Closing Bell, broadcasting live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswald Studios in Mumbai. Well, that was the day so far. Hello and welcome to Closing Bell, live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswald studio. I'm Reema Tenduka. With me is Nigel D'Souza. And looks like another ranged uh, trading session is coming to a close. One hour to go to wrap up the day and the week. But the positive bias in the markets continues. And the Nifty and the Sensex higher for the seventh day in a row. Not by a whole lot, but it's a green tick. Well, that's right, Rima. Winning streak. You know, all through yeah. the week, in fact, we've been building on that uh, tally in terms of uh, the number of sessions that we're winning. And for the final hour of trade, I think the Nifty Bank is the one that could move things around. It's virtually unmoved as of now. It's packed. You know, if you saw it in the morning, saw it now. In fact, you'll say it's not moved at all. But the Nifty Bank is the one that's holding closer on the 51,000 odd mark. If it can get closer to around the 51,300 mark, that's closer to the 50 DMA, and that's a technical resistance zone. But otherwise, Rima, a quiet session, but plenty of winners from the broader markets. Indeed, the Nifty once again is moving in just about a 90-point range. Europe, too, is not doing too much, but holding on to that positive bias. So frontline European indices are up between 0.2 to 0.3 percent, I guess, on the sidelines ahead of that all-important Jackson Hole meeting. Uh, and, you know, Fed Chair Jerome Powell will be speaking at 10 a.m. Eastern time. But for the Indians, if you want to tune into that speech, the time for you is 7.30 p.m. Uh, beyond the headline index, uh, it's Realty and IT, which is lagging. The Nifty Realty Index is down over 2%. The IT Index, with all the large-cap IT names, is down nearly 1%. And on the way up, it's closed. It's uh, autos, which are um, you know revving up, it's particularly the two-wheeler auto names. And we'll discuss that in greater detail. Well, that's right, Reema. Just a few stocks you know, I wanted to highlight uh, from the broader markets that are moving around. First source, that one's been in a world of its own. It was down lower. Now, in fact, it's spiked up. So big uptick is what we're seeing on that one. On the flip side, a few stocks have come in for profit taking. RPL Bank has been having periodic bursts. That stock has come in for some profit taking. You have, uh, you know, NBCC as well has now moved to the low point of the day. So some of these stocks in a world of their own. Let's see how the final 60 minutes of trade does pan out. Mitesh Takhar is back with us. Hi, Mitesh. What do you make of today's trading session? Seven straight session that we're going to be ending higher in all probability if we get, get through the next 59 minutes. Uh, your view on the Nifty, where are we headed? And particularly the Nifty Bank as well, quieter than what the Nifty is doing. So, Nigel, actually, you know, the market isn't uh, showing that momentum or the breakout. So, Nifty has been very sideways. It's gone down a few points, it's come back again a few points. I think, as I said, the Bank Nifty needs to get past 51, 100. I think once that happens, some kind of traction can come on the upside. Till then, I don't want to, you know, really look at the index because then there's no direction or a big move happening. You're not playing for 30, 40 points here and there, and then you will not get the exact uh, highs and lows. So I don't think trading the index uh, makes much of sense right now. So avoid it for the time being. Uh, trade the stock specific prices. I think that's the way we are approaching it. Okay, so then if it's going to be about stocks, what would you recommend, Mitesh? I have a buy on PEL with a stop at about, or PEL Enterprises with a stop at about 1040. For targets of 1100, so I think that's the first call. And Petrolhead, after a long time, is looking like it'll, uh, you know, give some profit, looking kind of a setup. So, sell here with the stop at 376 for targets of 360. Thank you very much for that. Let's uh, get to another important story where sources tell CNBC Avas that Alpha Holdings has sold its entire stake in Tata Tech in today's block deal. Yatin joins in with details on this. Yatin. 
Uh, so, Reema, uh, what we gather from sources is that uh, Alpha TC, which is a private equity uh, firm uh, uh, and, uh, you know, was a pre-IPO investor in Tata Technologies, has uh, sold their entire uh, shares uh, in a block transaction today. Obviously, the block transaction happened on uh, the exchanges uh, in the 1,000, 10, 1,000, 20, uh, you know, odd levels. Uh, and Alpha TC, uh, in the last shareholding, held nearly 1.5 crore shares, but the residual, uh, you know, 70, 80 lakh shares were sold today. And with this, I think they have, uh, you know, uh, cleaned out their entire investment in uh, Tata Technologies. And remember, at a valuation of 1,000 crores, they had invested, uh, you know, along with TPG uh, in Tata Technologies. Uh, and today, the market cap of the company is more than 40,000 crores. So, uh, yes, uh, the private equity investor are making an exit uh, in Tata Technologies in trade today. Thank you very much for that. So, Tata Tech came out with their IPO at 500 rupees. Right. So, from that level, it's done very well. But it had listed at 1,200. Exactly. And after listing, uh, I, I think it's not done anything. It went up to levels of 1,400. It's gone down to levels of 1,000. But it's traded very, very range-bound after listing. Yeah, I think, Barima, this was a bit of an overhang. So, at it's least scary. one of those factors are out of the way. So, it appears that uh, block trade overhang at least is out of the way. Let's see how the stock moves from here. But as Shreema said, on the day of listing itself, it had a blockbuster listing. And from there on, it's been quite, quite actually, in the last three months, actually virtually unmoved, even after today's pop. And you know, seeing. between uh, so both Tata Tech and KPIT Tech are ERD players. Yeah. Uh, KPIT is solely into automotive. Tata Tech gets a lot of their revenues from auto because of their uh, anchor clients, Tata Motors and JLR. But between the two, KPIT has been showing much, much faster yeah. growth. Uh, and Tata Tech's revenues, I think, in the current quarter had even declined. So just comparing the two, uh, KPIT is literally stolen a march. You know, and KPIT, Rima, I remember various brokerage notes being cautious at 900,000, 1,200, 1,300. Now the stock is at 1,800 odds, so it appears that uh, they seem to be doing something right. And the growth is something that they like, and they've also guided that the margins can even improve, improve. from these levels after seeing such a swift, uh, you know, uh, improvement in the last few years. Dilip Bhatt from uh, Pedigree uh, Advisory joins us on the show. Um, hi, Dilip, good afternoon, and uh, good to see you in. Uh, Dilip, what do you make of this one? Uh, Tara Tech, uh, as Rima mentioned, when it listed, blockbuster listing. From then on, it's been quiet. And between the two, Tara Tech as well as KPIT, what's your preference? Good afternoon, Nigel. Uh, I think this entire space, if you see Tata Technologies, KPIT, I would say to some extent, Tata Elixir and even Tata Communication, I think there are a uh, fair amount of things which are overlapping, especially in terms of the growth areas. So I think that, having said that, I think the clarity given by KPIT uh, gives much more confidence. But otherwise, I would say that the three Tata companies, uh, especially Tata Elixir and Tata Technologies, are very well placed in the niche area and continuing to capture a very good amount of uh, market, especially in the Europe. But what I would say is, from the current levels, Tata technology also appears to be fairly reasonably valued. I don't think that uh, there is anything which can really drive the stock up immediately. Maybe as what I just heard you telling that uh, a part of the overhang is removed, and rightly so. But otherwise, I would not be in a hurry to buy Tata Technologies. KPIT also, despite a good clarity given by the management and the guidance, I would still wait and watch not be in a hurry to buy them. Fair enough. Uh, that's the view coming in on KPIT Tech and Tata Tech. Let's move on to another important story because shares of Reliance Infrastructure and Reliance Power that's belonging to the Anil Dhirubhai Ambani Group, ADAG Group as we call it, have fallen 14%. And this is after the market regulator SEBI has taken punitive action against Anil Ambani and some of the key managerial uh, personnel. Um, at uh, Reliance Home Finance. Vivek is joining in with the details. Vivek, uh, I believe this is the final order from SEBI. And what does it say? Well, that's right. So, you know, like you mentioned, uh, all shares of the ADAG group uh, listed in us are under pressure today. You know, the, the important development, SEBI has gone ahead and issued a directive order where they have given the findings as well as, you know, given an order as to what exactly will be the actions taken on Anil uh, Ambani as well as some of the associates related to RHFL. Now, Reliance Home Finance uh, 
fraud case uh, is what we're talking about. The findings of SEBI established that there has been a fraudulent scheme that was orchestrated by Anil Ambani. This scheme was administered by uh, the KMPs of RHFL to siphon off funds from the public listed entity. Uh, what, you know, the actual modus operandi was that RHFL, that is Reliance Home Finance, uh, structured loans to credit unworthy conduits as well as onward borrowers. And these onward borrowers were actually promoter linked entities. What actually happened was that the loans resulted in erosion of the company's finances on eventually being declared as NPAs. Uh, remember, these loans were given as general purpose working capital loans to the lenders. Now, talking about you know, what exactly is the action being taken by SEBI, uh, number one, they've barred RHFL as well as Anil Ambani from the capital markets. Uh, RHFL has been barred from dealing in securities market for six months. Anil Ambani has been barred from dealings in the securities market for a period of five years. Along with that, he's also been barred from associating with any listed entity as director or as a key managerial per person for a period of five years. Anil Ambani has been barred from associating with, with any SEBI intermediary as well for a period of five years. Along with that, there has also been a monetary penalty that has been imposed on Anil Ambani and other notices. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot uh, for that, uh, Vivek. Uh, well, uh, Dilip, uh, you know, I don't know whether you want to comment on uh, this group of companies, uh, anything uh, on that front, or any other idea from the broader markets that you're looking at, which you believe deserves some attention, and maybe some allocation, even at these levels. Sure, Nigel. I think uh, on a broader basis from the markets, I think DLF looks still pretty interesting. One thing which I've noted, uh, if you have seen what is happening in the real estate is a lot of companies have really started talking about in the real estate, talking about the pre-sales, talking about the cash flows instead about the profits. So I think, uh, especially DLF, if you see it, when they're talking about generating about a $1 billion at the group level, that means quite a bit. So I think that also gives a lot of confidence in the real estate sector and particularly more so uh, companies like DLF. And uh, I think one should uh, look at this particular sector. Uh, I think this, this is a sector which can really uh, still do pretty well in the coming times over the next two to three years. So DLF looks pretty good and interesting for us. I think Cal Calcutta Electric Supply CSC looks very strong in terms of the growth. And in, in spe especially if you see the, uh, the typical thermal and uh, the renewable energy both, Particularly, the renewable, renewable energy energy will be something which will generate a lot of uh, growth in the coming years. So I think we should look at this particular uh, aspect in CSC, and CSC will certainly register strong growth in terms of top line as well as bottom line. We all know the kind of cash flows that they generate. So CSC looks pretty interesting from the current levels. Okay, next uh, Thursday, by the way, the 29th of August, we'll have the August series expiry and plus the 47th annual general meeting of Reliance Industries. And this is a highly anticipated, uh, keenly watched event by all investors because periodically Mukesh Ambani has used this platform of the AGM to make big announcements. So whether it was their telecom venture, Reliance Geo, or the new energy investments, uh, you know, talking about a 75,000 capex. And now this time, the big question is going to be whether he will announce a timeline for the IPOs of the telecom and the retail business. This is something that investors have been waiting, shareholders have been waiting, but will he use the platform uh, to make that announcement? 29th is the AGM. But ahead of that, we've got some, uh, you know, increases in target price, some bullish bets by brokerages. Uh, so, uh, Dilip, come in on Reliance Industries. Bernstein today has put a target price of 3,440. CLSA has put the target price of 3,300. Do you think this time in the AGM, we will hear more on the IPO plans uh, for at least the two entities, telecom and the retail venture? Sure, very much. I think uh, everyone is eagerly looking forward for uh, the IPO that is expected uh, from both the companies, whether it's the Geo or I, uh, uh, the retail venture also. Uh, and I think uh, the valuations also will be pretty interesting to see because both have done reasonably quite well of late. And uh, the way they have capitalized both the companies, that also uh, gives a lot of confidence. Yes, I think uh, Reliance Industries, maybe on a SOP basis, some of part basis, will look pretty good and interesting in the longer run, especially as these two entities get uh, listed and the cap market capitalization gets discovered 
and hopefully it will still go northwards. Okay, all right, I got that, uh, Dilip Ji. Just to hold our thought, uh, two-wheeler stocks, they're in focus. There's a brokerage note coming from JP Morgan. Nimish joins us to fill us in with all of those details in our special segment, Standard Brokerage Reports. Nimish, take it away. Hi, Nigel, you know, big moves on, on the two-wheeler names here on the back of that JP Morgan note. Uh, today, actually, JP Morgan has upgraded uh, TVS Motors to outperform from neutral, and they've raised a target price on the stock to 3050. Interestingly, even UBS has still raised a target price on TVS Motors. To 3200, and this seems to be the uh, you know most aggressive in terms of target price on TVS. Uh, on Bajaj Auto, while uh, JPM has retained the overweight stance, they've raised the target price there to 11,225. Uh, on the other side, they've downgraded the Hero Motor Corp to neutral now. They have a target price of 50 to 30 there, and uh, they maintain a cautious view on uh, Aisha Motors with a neutral rating and a target price of close to 45.10. Now, for the two-wheeler sector, uh, JPM one believes that. Uh, uh, that segment is more attractive in the entire auto basket for them. They expect and they forecast uh, two-wheeler growth to outpace the, the uh, passenger vehicle growth in the near future. Electrification, yes, it's, 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 you know, it's going up, but the pace has been quite gradual, and hence they do not expect any margin pressures on the, inc on the incumbent players, at least in the near term. Uh, for TVS, uh, JP Morgan says that the market, ca market gain is quite resilient for TVS motors, and hence they've raised the uh, EPS estimates by 6 to 18%. Uh, for FY26 and FY27. For Bajaj Auto, JP Morgan says that uh, it's a potent combination of ability and intent. And on back of that, even for Bajaj Auto, they've raised the EPS estimates by 3 to 5 percent. So, back of all this, uh, a big upgrade coming in on uh, TBS Motors, uh, upgrade to an overweight. However, on Bajaj Auto, JP Morgan has sharply raised the target price now to 11,225. Thank you very much for that. Uh, just earlier this week, TBS Motors also rolled out the new Jupiter 110cc scooter, which will replace the old model. It's priced at 75, sorry, 73,000 uh, rupees X showroom. It will be available in four variants and it will compete with the likes of Honda Activa and Hero Pleasure Plus. Parikshit caught up with the CEO uh, K. N. Radhakrishnan on the new launch and what TBS uh, Motors expects from the festive season this time. This year, the rural for the first time is ahead of urban, okay? And uh, we are extremely happy that the industry is doing well. This festival season, I am of the view that you will see much better growth rate than whatever the 13% what you are seeing because the sentiments are positive. We are expecting a normal monsoon this year and uh, we will do much better with especially this product launch. I am I'm expecting much, much better growth than the industry. If the industry is growing to grow, Minimum, more, see, the, so far we have seen 13%. I'm expecting much better growth rate, maybe 15%. Uh, that's uh, TVS Motors for you. It's been a big mover, a near 40% rally since the beginning of the year. Uh, Dilip, uh, in the two-wheeler space, do you think Ola Electric is going to challenge the hegemony of uh, these incumbent players? Because they are fighting back. They've got deep pockets. They've got EV plans, aggressive EV plans. How do you expect the entire two-wheeler space to play out from here, and which one would be your top bet? Sure. I think uh, for the two-wheeler, there are two, uh, I think, parts which are really uh, making it a lot more interesting. Of course, apart from the traditional one, the second one, of course, is the EV. But coming to the regular ones, I think what we have seen in the last, uh, except for last year, uh, three to four years before that, we saw that the rural sales were pretty weak across for the entire two-wheeler, and we saw very muted growth. But now I think as the things are changing out over there, I'm sure what we think is that all the three players, whether it's Hero Motors, whether it's Bajaj or whether it's TVS, all of them should do well. And then regarding the EV, as what you very rightly said, with the kind of uh, money and especially the cash that they have in the books, they have been a much better position to introduce better products, compete very inter intensively. So, and of course, they will be gaining market share. So, I think on all the three fronts, uh, uh, they look pretty good and interesting. Maybe I think they have run up quite a bit. Maybe I would say that uh, Bajaj from here can go up by another 15%. TVS, I'm not so sure that I'm so very bullish on that. And Euro Motors also, if I if I have it, I will just hold on. I will not make a fresh commitment to that. All right. Uh, Dilip, final question before we let you go. What about cement? You know, Orion Cement in the last few minutes of Sunny make, made an up move. I spoke to Ambuja Cements earlier this week, and they said that pricing, they're not very confident on pushing through, but they are focusing on the cost side uh, measures. Your preference on the cement pack. Part of the street wants the large cap names because the large are going to get larger. 
But some of these candidates, possibly an Orient, possibly a Novoco, they could get taken over. So there is a valuation argument over there as well. Where are you placed? So certainly, I think what we have seen in uh, cement over the last couple of years is that in spite and despite the fact that the GDP has done so well, the infra companies have done so well, real estate companies have done so well, we have not seen a real serious uptake, uh, uptake in the uh, cement demand. And consequently, also the prices have not gone anywhere. I think the cost advantage is coming to them because of the, uh, the natural conditions which are prevailing maybe the lower uh, petroleum prices. Some of these things and the lower inflation will help them play out. But on the supply side and on the price side, they seem to be uh, a little more stressed at the moment. So I would say that cement is something where, as what uh, a, a few of these cement names which you have taken, I think there's a corporate event that may trigger some of the uh, cement stocks. But by and large, cement as an industry Still, I think one can wait and watch and not be in a hurry to buy. Uh, Dilip, great conversation. Thank you for joining us this Friday afternoon. You have a great weekend. We need to slip into a short break. But on the other side, we'll chat with Mohit Khanna from Purnartha Investment Advisors. So stay tuned. Welcome back. Well, let's get chatting with uh, Mohit Khanna, fund manager at Purnatha Investment Advisors, who joins us on the show. Hi, Mohit. Good afternoon and good to have you on the show, Mohit. Well, uh, I wanted to understand what's your strategy. And one factor that I'm looking at is the contra call that you're taking. Everyone's bullish on financials, but you believe that, in fact, you know, that's not a space that you're looking to load up on. 
And on the flip side, the chemical space is a debate whether or not it's bottomed out. You believe so. I think you're bullish out there. So run us through this contra call first. Right. Good afternoon, Nigel, and, and good afternoon to your viewers. Uh, yes, uh, for financials, uh, we are a little bit of uh, under on an underbid position. We uh, really don't uh, understand or like uh, that the deposit mobilization issues that, that the industry has been facing has bottomed out. We think there are more legs on that. On the other hand, uh, if we see the provisioning that has increased in the first quarter uh, year over year basis, we think that provisioning uh, is going to set being set at a new normal, which is going to be at higher levels. So yes, uh, that will be uh, that will be creating a little bit of nim pressure for these guys. So and on the other hand, on the unsecured side, uh, RBI has been uh, been very very active uh, and pointing out issues with multiple lenders. FinTechs have taken their fair share uh, in in and uh, in the lower strata of the financing. So in, overall, we see that the road for financials is still looking difficult over the next few quarters. On the uh, on the chemical side, uh, you have to be very very selective. So yes, we are seeing some traction on the margins uh, in couple of companies uh, because margins bottomed out around December. So we do like uh, the uh, you know the uh, the important the base uh, impact that we will uh, see right uh, the positive base impact that we will see in the chemical on the chemical companies. However, in FY twenty five twenty six. Uh, the, a lot of capacities are coming on stream. So we need to re be really watchful on the utilization of those capacities and the pricing. So we are uh, purely bottoms up on, on that front because the sub-segments within chemicals can get really tricky and they have their own market and demand share. Okay, uh, Goldman Sachs, by the way, has lowered the GDP growth forecast for India for CY24, that's the current calendar year that we're in, not fiscal year, calendar year, they've lowered the GDP forecast by 20 basis points to 6.7%. So that's below consensus expectations, which is closer to 7%. And even for next year, CY25, uh, GDP estimates have been brought down by 20 basis points to 6.4%. Again, below what the consensus expectation is. But will this spur uh, the Reserve Bank of India to go ahead and cut uh, policy rates? Anyway, dissenting voices have been going, you know, have gone up as the policy uh, minutes showed. Uh, Mohit, uh, afternoon. Uh, this is Reema here. Thanks so much for joining in. Uh, so if you could take us through what would be the way you would construct your portfolio, what would be the top bets that you have right now? Right. Uh, thank you, Reema. Uh, good afternoon. So um, I won't go stock specific, but on the uh, sector side, we are uh, overweight uh, capital goods. We continue to like pharma. We are building our positions or increasing our weights uh, on the FMCG side. And we are absolutely uh, in love with the two wheelers. We are overweight over there as well. On the so underweight, as yeah. Nigel discussed, we are underweight a little bit on financials. We are equal with IT. So hmm. you're overweight capital goods, auto and pharma. And in FMCG, you're building your portfolio right now. Yes. We continue okay. to like FMCG. Got it. Uh, Mohit, you also run a multi-asset fund, if I got that correct. Right. Uh, could you right. tell us what weights are you, uh, you know, uh, are you allocating to different asset classes, to equity, to debt, to commodities? What is the current mix, and have you changed it in the recent past, given the elevated valu valuations we have in the equity market? Right. So uh, we, uh, I do run a Pronartha multi-asset uh, strategy. We call it Pronartha One, and in that uh, I have. Uh, equity exposure uh, somewhere around uh, 72 to 73% as of now. We recently reduced our equity exposure from 85%. We can oscillate the equity exposure between 70 and 90%. So we are at the bottom end uh, right now. We just got it and got uh, reduced that. On the debt side, uh, we have uh, 12 to 30% allocation as of now. Uh, again, on, on debt, we can go from 10 to 25%. So again, we are a little bit uh, lower on the debt side as well. Uh, on the gold, we are at 5%, that is the commodity bet. But we are sitting a little bit on cash, uh, that is around 10% for us. Uh, we hope to find better opportunities, uh, you know, uh, on the equity side, maybe uh, if, if, if we do get, or the in deployment in debt should increase from here on. This is little what? unique in the sense because uh, in this Purnartha one strategy, we combine the exposure to both 
equity direct equity and mutual funds as well both on the debt and the equity side yeah, right more, more you know just going by what you are saying on the way you have moved your debt in the equity portfolios equity is at the lower end of the range and debt is at the higher end of the range and also you have raised some cash so are you yes. a little bit cautious at current reckoning on equity markets yes yes uh, i do see i do see uh, markets uh, trading uh, as we can see trading at all time highs and even on the valuation side as well uh, secondly as uh, you know uh, rima just pointed out goldman sachs uh, so on the on the second uh, goldman sachs reducing india's gdp so yes we we are also of the same uh, we point that the macros uh, or the, uh, the excitement over improving macros is already captured in the market uh, we we want to tone down uh, our uh, expectations little bit over here and lastly uh, even if you see uh, the sentiment side so that is also slightly turning uh, to be you know uh, being fully captured in the current valuation so all three fronts uh, what we follow uh, we we do get a signal that uh, we should be lowering our equity exposure uh you're sitting on 10% cash uh yes. you're hopeful of better opportunities to invest in on the equity side what's the big right. picture do you anticipate a correction is coming in the market uh well if only if i could know it for real but yes uh, we want to be a little bit uh, you know uh, on a safer side uh, on the other hand uh, there are multiple bottoms of uh, you know uh, opportunities that are popping up in different sectors so we want to capture those uh, without increasing much risk in the portfolio mm got it uh, well uh, tell us about this call that you have on railways Uh, you know railways is as a theme is likely to get a lot of focus lot of capex spend as well but these right. stocks actually have got the fast train you know the valuation seem out of whack how yes. are you approaching this theme i think you yes. had some exposure out there yes so we do we do uh, have exposure in railways we continue to like the story so if you see last uh, you know few uh, quarters or maybe a year or so most of the railways stocks have really performed well uh, on the on the order inflow uh, news announcements now uh, if you if we just remove vande bharat uh, from the whole picture the majority of the other order book should get executed over the one or two years only vande bharat orders are likely to go for next four to five years so from here on uh, the execution becomes much more important the execution capability uh, will decide uh, the stock returns from here on the another positive factor for the railways is that the budget uh, has been announced now and we have seen the increase in the capital expenditure now this expenditure has to be done within the next 6 to 7 months when we will have another budget coming in so yes the incremental orders coming in might not move the needle on the sitting order book execution will uh, you know come start to coming into the focus but the exp- expenditure by the government has been squeezed into uh, three quarters should get uh, should give us some respite on that side so we continue to like railway stocks we continue to like uh, stocks which have execution capabilities in railways and have a long order uh, book or a long dated order book which gives me revenue visibility where do you stand on uh, real estate uh, mohit um, we've seen this entire urbanization scheme the real estate stocks and the growth rates have been very strong for the last Three or four years, so this upcycle has persisted. Now there are some question marks that have the stocks priced in all the good news, or does the real estate cycle still have some legs to go? Uh, what is your own view on real estate? And you know, would you bet on the Pan India players, or would you look at regional players? Right. So uh, while we don't have any exposure to real estate as of now, Rima, uh, but uh, in my sense, real estate is all about location, location, location. So. i will be uh, inclined to look at uh, players uh, on the uh, you know uh, regional side having said that uh, on in the in the puratha uh, one strategy which is the multi asset strategy we do have exposure to reits and uh, that is where uh, we continue to like those kind of uh, you know uh, income earning uh, assets wherein the lowering of interest rates will help me Uh, over a period of time the second important aspect on that front is the gccs uh, which are coming into india in 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 big way 
and that is where the REITs, I think, uh, stand out, would stand out as a real estate investment option for investors over the next couple of years. Got it. All right, Mohit, uh, good to have you on the show. Thanks a lot for joining in. So we have got uh, your contra calls, fairly positive on chemicals, underweight on uh, financials, and uh, the way you want to play the real estate theme as well as rather via REITs rather than play any of that. Thanks a lot for joining in. We look forward to chatting up with you in the coming weeks as well. Well, as we had that conversation, actually, uh, the markets have flattened out. So the Nifty, from trading well in the green, well, it's flattened out a, a little bit. The Nifty Bank has moved into the red, mildly so. Nothing really to uh, worry about, but uh, that seems to be the picture. So let's slip into a short break. As always, on the other side, Nimish is waiting for us. He'll tell us what's going on in D-Street Chatter and our technical calls as well lined up. Welcome back. Well, any which ways you cut it, it's a quiet session. But let's find out what's going on in DD Street Chatter. Nimesh joins us to tell us uh, what he's picking up. Nimesh, as quiet as can be for a Friday. Oh, yes, Nigel. You know, flat day of trade. But, you know, uh, the way to look would be, uh, given the weak global queues, given that uh, our, our own uh, PCR is at close to 1.4, 14, 15 stocks are in FNO band. Uh, we've, not, uh, we've not given up, you know, the gains. And, uh, and we are holding in the green. That's largely because of uh, the institutional buying. Outside of blocks as well, I understand there are buy flows. So today for a change, there is a mid-cap basket buying is what I understand at a leading FI desk. Within sectors, OMC is a well bid. So is the case with auto names. The two wheelers are highlighted because of the JP Morgan note. And also some pay, select PSU banks are also are well bid by large institutions. So uh, as I said, you know, not a bad outcome in, in today's market given the global backdrop uh, as what we've, what we've been seeing. Uh, technically, uh, today's uh, weekly close above the, the, the 24,600 is going to be very crucial, and, and the sense I'm getting is, if that sustains, which looks like it's going to sustain, you might see the you might see further rally on the upside 
and further short covering as well. So, net net, uh, while blocks have been pretty pretty big, and and this week saw large numbers, but even outside of blocks, the momentum uh, in terms of buying uh, by the larger FIs and domestic institutions continue. And for a change today, it's the mid caps which have been well bid. Okay, and uh, what about in terms of individual stocks? Normally, you always start off with blocks. This is what happened today. This is what's expected next week. What do you have for us? So let's go with what uh, what Rima said. You know, the first the couple of blocks which happened today, uh, Tata Technologies and uh, GMR Airports. I'll start with Tata, Tata Technologies first. Uh, stock has recovered sharply from the intraday lows after the large block. One crore equity got changed hands. As uh, you know, Yatin pointed out, it's a clean out trade from a, from a, from a FI investor. But uh, you know the the street has been talking about a, a, a big slippage. That no, that doesn't seems to be the case. Is what I understand from bankers. Uh, it's it's a well bid book both from uh, HNIs as well as from family offices. So uh, this disclosures could be quite interesting. But uh, as Yatin pointed out, it's a clean out trade, and hence we've seen an up move in that particular name. The second stock is GMR Airports. Even there, there was a large block, uh, nearly one percent equity got changed hands. I understand a domestic mutual fund was a seller, and a and a and a large long only uh, you know fund. Was a buyer in GMR Repos today. So again, disclosures if if it happens could be quite interesting in GMR Repos as well. The second stock is Paytm. Been uh, been in the news of late, been buzzing as well. There are large volumes in the last couple of days. H&I investors are quite active as well. Uh, but now I understand there could be a large block in uh, Paytm very soon. The strategic investor who owns close to nine ten percent could be a potential seller there. So watch out for that in days to come. The third stock is Morpen Labs. Again, small stock, but. Uh, again, back in Lime Dead of late, uh, they, they did a QIP as well. Some good funds bought into it. Uh, HNI is quite active as well in, in Warpen Labs of late. And then it's a big move in the last few days. And the last is both uh, the OMCs, HPCL and IOC in particular. Uh, uh, while the stocks have been uh, buzzing slightly, but the volumes are on the higher side and looks like there is jewelry based buying now, uh, which has come back in the OMC names and specifically on IOC and HPCL. Okay, all right, Nimesh. Thanks a lot uh, for joining and giving us that list. Well, uh, let's get Mitesh Tucker back uh, into this conversation. Uh, Mitesh, 20 minutes to go for today's session, and then we're off to the weekend. But uh, what are the stocks you have for us? So I have a uh, SCBT on Steel Authority or sale. Uh, keep a stop at about levels of uh, uh, 133 half and look for a target of around 127. And I bought India slightly, you know, not a very familiar name, but uh, has been fashion for the last one hour on the screen. I think that's the uh, buy with the stop at 28,800 for targets of 29,750. Thank you very much uh, for that. We could wrap up uh, trade in the next 20 minutes, but it's going to be an action-packed uh, evening yeah. this Friday evening because NSC index constituent changes could be announced later this evening. So what are the changes in the offering? Vivek is here to tell us more. Vivek. Well, that's right. So most likely, you know, there will be the scheduled uh, meeting of the index maintenance subcommittee of all of the NSE indices. So you will see inclusions and exclusions across various NSE indices. The ones that we are tracking are the Nifty as well as the Nifty Bank Index, given the fact that this is where most of the passive funds will be active and there will be flows that will come in on the back of these particular changes. Uh, so all of the changes that we are discussing are IFL estimates. Uh, first up, you know, when you're talking about the Nifty 50, Two inclusions are expected. Trend is one stock that's expected to be included into the Nifty 50. On the back of that, you could see inflows of close to $422 million. The other stock is Bharat Electronics. If that makes the cut, that could see uh, inflow of close to $400 million. Now, remember, these co in inclusions are based on the fact that there may not be any fresh FNO additions as far as the entire FNO list of stocks are concerned. On the other hand, what will make way for you know these stocks to come in? Uh, you will see LTI Mind Tree you know, uh, exiting and they could see beef sell flows of almost $177 million. Devise Laboratories could see sell flows of almost $220 million. Now, coming to the Nifty Bank, Nifty Bank, you will see an inclusion of uh, Canada Bank uh, that could fetch inflows of close to $80 million, and Bandhan Bank could be excluded from the Nifty Banking Index, and that could see outflows of close to $40 million. Okay, all right, Vivek, thanks a lot for joining in and giving us those, that list with all the expectations. Well, let's get in Hemang Jani into this conversation. Hemang, good afternoon and good to see you in. I wanted to ask you about the Sanjeev Goenka clutch of stocks. You know, uh, Mr. Goenka spoke to Shireen a couple of weeks or so ago. And from there, really, he's been, uh, you know, the most valuable player. We'll just take a look at the way some of those stocks have moved. You have PCBL that's done well. First Source has done well. CESC as well has done fairly well. And the holding company 
that's the RPSG Ventures, which has the little bit of IPL, it has Mohan Bagan as well, and also holds majority stake in First Source. That, in fact, has done well. From this entire clutch of stocks, uh, what do you like? I believe a couple of them have uh, an investor conference as well that's going on. Tell us more. Uh, good afternoon, Nigel. Thanks for having me. Yes, uh, uh, what you said is right that uh, many of uh, Sanjeev uh, Goenka Group companies have done well. Essentially, uh, what's happening is that uh, across some of the companies, the outlook uh, and the vision that uh, uh, the group has provided has been extremely encouraging. Just to uh, give you a little bit of background about PCBL, uh, you know, they have said that uh, they are looking to grow profit uh, 5x over the next five years and the kind of guidance that they have given for the existing business Carbon Black and the uh, specialty chemical company Equa Farm is quite encouraging. So there is a massive upgrade that you are seeing in terms of earnings and we ourselves have upgraded uh, our uh, price target as well as earnings forecast uh, for next uh, two years. Uh, so we are looking at about a 25% kind of a growth in PCBL. And same is the case with some of the other companies, whether it is C, SE, uh, Sare Gamma, uh, and uh, you know a couple of other companies which are part of the by the way, uh, the mid-cap index is uh, selling off now. The mid-cap index was also flat when we began the show at 230. And now in a span of about 30 minutes, it's given up about 200, 250 points from the top pull-up that mid-cap index. Now down close to about a half a percent. You can't say that it's uh, flatlining right now. There is a considerable fall seen in the mid-cap index. And the advanced decline ratio, too, has turned in favor of the losing side. Uh, Hemang, uh, you know, afternoon. Thank you for joining in. You know, the stock which catches your attention today is Nika. We've had an investor who sold part of his stake in Nika. Now, traditionally, traditionally, whenever you had any kind of a stake sale, the markets would fear supply pressure. The stock would end in the red. But look at Nika today. Um, you know, I think the last time I checked, it was up five, six percent, and now it's extended its gain to a seven and a half percent rally. What's the street latching onto? So clearly, when we see some action uh, across uh, the platform companies, you would see some rub off uh, for names like Nike. Also, typically, when you uh, see the lock-in period getting over and a large, uh, you know, entity uh, gets out of the way, uh, you do see the market reacting to that in a positive way, depending upon who the buyers are and you know how how uh, you know attractive the stock is. So Nika is probably, uh, you know, uh, uh, reacting to that development. But within the uh, entire universe, if you see, uh, Nika has not been the best performing stock. I think when you look at Zomato, uh, you know, and some of the other platform companies, uh, you know, Nika has been a laggard. Also, in terms of performance, it's not as if that, you know, they are doing anything uh, exciting. Also, because of the way the Reliance retail is foraying into the similar kind of a space, uh, the overall growth uh, for Nika could be a bit challenging. So it might be a tactical, uh, you know, 10, 12 percent kind of an up move, but not looking at a significant re rating for Nika at this point of time. Okay. All right. Another stock that's buzzing around is Edelweiss Financial Services. Hey, Mang, I think you tracked this counter as well. What's the view? It's now bursting away high volume stock up 6, 7 percent. Uh, it's been a low profile company for a while, but off late, uh, we have seen some action in Nuvama where the company has a 14% stake. So, when you do a sum of parts across Nuvama, EAAA, uh, their mutual fund business, and ARC, uh, on a sum of part basis, uh, the valuation uh, that we are getting is about uh, 117, 120 kind of a value after considering a 16% holding company discount. Uh, and as we all know that, you know, wealth companies are getting a very, you know, good uh, valuation at this point of time. So there is a case for some sort of, uh, you know, uh, re-rating in Edelweiss, unlocking of the value because of, you know, this couple of deals that they are trying to exit. Uh, stay on, uh, Hemang. Uh, that's uh, the view on Edelweiss Financial. Fair value could be seen higher at 117, 120. Get into a break. Minda Corp, by the way, has also spiked up close to about 18%. Just pull up that stock. Uh, as we get into the short break, and we'll also listen in to uh, the opinion views coming in from Andrew Holland, Chief Executive Officer at Avendis Alternate Strategies, talking about his view on the interest rate cut uh, expected in the United States, his preferred themes in the Indian market. 
I think we all kind of worked on the base, working on the basis now that an interest rate cut in, in, in September is coming. I think they should front run the kind of interest rate cycle. I think they should do 50 basis points, albeit that our base case is 25. I think that would give the market that kind of extra fillip that the, the Fed is ahead of the curve this time. And I think that's the key. The market continues to worry about whether the Fed is you know, behind the curve Obviously, the way we think about it is that you know we continue to to play on the themes that we think will you know play out over a longer period because uh, that's where you're going to continue to see the earnings momentum uh, you know not just for for the next two quarters or three quarters but for the next two to three years. So again, that falls under that defense renewables uh, capex spending uh, kind of scenarios. So if interest rate cycle is now starting to fall, it should be good for our banking sector in India uh, if the RBI follows suit. And of course, we'll all be thinking about October uh, at that next uh, interest rate policy meeting. I think if you're playing this, you play the whole sector uh, in, in, the, in the short term um, and then see which ones have, uh, have, have outperformed and, and then do your, your kind of reallocation between private and PSU banks. I think the next catalyst, uh, as I mentioned previously, will now be the awarding of more contracts. Um, and I expect that will happen from probably kind of, uh, you know, next month onwards to, to the end of the year. And I think that's going to be the next leg. Um, my concern is, is always um, is, is execution and, uh, and, and that's maybe down the road. But, you know, we, we move around within the themes. Obviously, if you're feeling that some of the themes are not uh, have taken a, a back seat compared to others, then you can shift across. So hospitality is probably where we're a little bit more excited at the moment. Uh, I think uh, in terms of Ola's listing, I think we're all uh, surprised at where the share price is, um, but it's obviously kind of, um, you know, highlighted some of the undervaluations of, of the other two wheeler companies in this sector who also have, uh, you know, uh, exposure in the EV sectors.
Welcome back. Well, a couple of stocks are doing quite well right now. You have JTL. That stock has spiked up. It has some valuation comfort. And maybe, in fact, volume pickup and EBITDA put on as well could look pretty good from year on. It's come off the recent peak, but for the time being, it's regaining some of the lost ground. So JTL should come up for you on the screen currently at the high point of the day. Uh, Himang, I wanted uh, your comment. You know, people have this debate with regard to APL Apollo as well as uh, JTL. Anything you like from the pipe space? Well, Nigel, when you look at APL Apollo, for last almost about two or three quarters, their performance has not been that great, uh, you know, both in terms of volume growth, in terms of margins. Uh, so though we like that space, I think JTL Industries' uh, performance has been much better. It's a very small company, hardly about 4,200 crore kind of a market cap. But when I compare between APL, Apollo and JTL, I feel that uh, uh, JTL has done much better when you look at uh, the performance uh, you know, over the last three to four quarters. Okay, all right. Let's talk about a couple of other big volume movers as well. Madison seems to be moving higher on strong volumes. Uh, do you have a, a, you know, any view on this stock? Volumes are high. And uh, as we speak, I think the stock is at the high point of the day. Nigel, I think the numbers were uh, pretty uh, pretty much in line with consensus. Uh, but I think what is driving Motherson for uh, you know uh, the last few days is that because of the kind of action that we are seeing in the two wheeler space and the kind of offering that Motherson has, you know, both in terms of the typical uh, you know engines as well as the EV side. So there is a sense that you might see a uh, much better uh, volume growth uh, and margin for Mother Sun. And, uh, you know, post result, there is a sense that, uh, you know, this company should do much better. So uh, Mother Sun, we have a price target of about 225 rupees. Got it. Uh, stay with us, Hemang, for the time being. You know, let's uh, get in some commentary we got earlier today. Sham Metallics and Energy, that stock is holding up in the green after UBS initiated coverage with a buy rating. They have a target price of around 1,200 rupees a share. The brokerage says that the company is on track to report its high profit growth as well as forecast in a bitter CAGR of around 39% over the next three years. Earlier today, I spoke to the company's vice chairman and managing director, Mr. Agarwal. Let's listen in to what he had to say. In the time to come, in next three to four years, we expect that we should be able to cross more than 72 75%. And most of the investment is on the downstream side, on the value addition side, and also going backward on the cost side. Whatever margins we are doing today, it has to enhance because, you know, you are seeing all the downstream projects will add more value forward. And the investment backward is also reducing the cost. So definitely the margin should improve around close to 4 to 5 percent in the time to come. Yeah, because if you see all the downstreams are not very heavy capex and it's all value added, a uh, little different. So definitely uh, the ROC has to go up further because uh, it's majorly on the downstream is creating more margins and the cap capacity what had to be added on the uh, upstream side has already been added and most of the downstream, you know, 70-80% of the raw material, you know, we will be consuming. As Shah Metallic is always a very investor and stakeholder friendly company, we would like to abide whatever is in the interest of the company, we would like to go on that. Okay, got that. Uh, Hemang, do you track this one? Shah Metallics, I recall it came out with an issue at around 300 rupees, but they timed the issue very, very well. The stock very quickly, I think, gave you 20-25% uh, pop-up, but then it corrected, and from there it's more than doubled. Uh, at around 800 rupees, what's the view? So, Nigel, we don't uh, cover the stock as such, uh, so uh, no specific uh, view or, you know, uh, comment from my side. Do you like anything? You know, Vedanta did well, but that one as well has come in for some profit taking today. Some of these stocks actually, Nalco, Tata Steel, almost all of them from the day of the Supreme Court verdict, you know, they got a bit of a knock, but they didn't get knocked out. And that's the point that we made here on CNBC TV 18 as well. That this was a negative, but given that they have 12 years to pay those penalties, if at all, then it's good news. How would you view the space? So, Nigel, when that news came out, there was a knee-jerk reaction across uh, the mining companies, maybe Tata Steel, Sale, uh, you know, NMDC. But when you look at that order in detail, uh, the actual impact is minuscule and that too you have to, you know, pay it over a period of time. And in terms of the, you know, overall impact on the profitability, it's hardly, you know, 2 or 3%. 
So I think uh, given the fact that you have a very high probability of a rate cut in US, uh, you're seeing some stability in the base metal prices, which had corrected, you know, last two weeks. So you're seeing a very smart pullback. And within the pack, what we like at this point of time uh, is Vedanta, because, uh, you know, you're seeing a much diversified product profile. Uh, uh, you know, that is not a major concern right now, and it is uh, fairly attractive at this point of time. All right. Final question, Hemang, before we let you go. We had a large trade on uh, Tata Tech earlier. Uh, what's the view out there when it listed? Everyone was rushing in to buy, but if someone who bought on the listing day, I don't think they're making any money since then. And another one that's popped up on my list is Bidla Soft. That as well is surging as we speak. It was in the red when we started off the show, but now it's moved into the green. Uh, your view on these two? Uh, Tata Tech has been a laggard uh, for a while. Uh, now that the block has happened uh, at a relatively lower price, uh, you might see a tactical buying opportunity. Fundamentally, don't like the space much, though they are you know, in the ENRD uh, space, which is growing at a better rate. But in terms of triggers, uh, you know, it's lacking. So maybe a you know eight ten percent kind of a tactical opportunity, given the block and the you know large investor has moved out. Uh, so uh, that is my view on Tata Tech, which is the other one that you named. Birla Soft. So Nigel Birla Soft, actually the numbers were not uh, that good. Uh, the management guidance was also subdued, but uh, you know we have seen a good amount of pullback across mid cap IT companies. So I read this as a catch up play, but within the mid cap IT, uh, I would go with the FSL first source, uh, you know, which is uh, come out with much better guidance and is still at a discount to Birla Soft and KPIT. Got it. Hemang, I appreciate you joining in. Wishing you a good evening and a rocking weekend ahead as well. Thanks a lot for joining in. Well, it was a quiet day of trade today, but uh, the markets go on with some gains. So we maintained that winning streak. Seven in a row, the Nifty held up in the green. The Nifty Bank, that was a relative underperformer, that ended lower in trade today. But the real action was in the broader markets. Minda Corp, the stock goes home with a gain of around 20%. Majority of the moves came in the last hour of trade. In fact, in the last 20 minutes, the stock went from 15 to 20%. SCPC was another stock that was up close to 18%. So big move is what you're seeing out there. Jane Irrigation, PCBL, both of them were up more than 10% in trade. PCBL as well was up close to around 10% in today's trading session. So good going out there. And a couple of these names moved post large trades, namely Nikam as well as Startup Tech. Both of them did surge up in trade, ending at the high point of the day. JTL Industries, well, that stock suddenly picked up pace in the final uh, 60 minutes of trade. So that stock as well did quite well. So plenty of action from the broader markets. And the Anil Ambani group of stocks actually didn't do well. You had Reliance Infra that was down, Reliance Power that was down. Ola Electric from the two-wheeler space did come in for profit-taking. That went home with a cut of around 4%. But you had other names that did well, namely Hero Motor Corp, Bajaj, as well as TVS Motors. All of them went home with gains in today's session. But that's it from myself and the entire team on Closing Bell. Uh, we'll have to wrap up on uh, this show, but you don't go anywhere because Editor's Roundtable comes up next.